How many of you guys are artists or, or ever drawn? You're an artist? You, you like to draw? I know. You like to draw? You like, you like to draw? Artists. Now, how many of you guys can't draw that well, but you have like really good ideas that you like keep in your head? Like if you're a writer or something, do you know, do you like, do you like come up with ideas, but you know, you just can't really put it on paper or anything? I'm a terrible artist. <laughs> Well, I have a solution for some of you people that will probably encourage you to want to try out art and and make it look like a wonderful thing to do. So, okay. <laughs> how to expand your mind? I mean, how to expand your imagination and creativity? So, you just you just think about how can I, how can I do that? How can I? What, what do I do when I want to come up with an idea for something? Like you see these people on, you see these great directors like Ridley Scott. I, like I watched some of his movies. He's, he made um, Blade Runner, and I just said, what what came up? What what did he do to inspire him to make a movie like that? The scenery, like the the technology that they use. How how did he come up with that? Um, obviously like George Lucas, Star Wars. I. I've seen this concept art because I was really interested in it. I'm talking about like one of the first three Star Wars movies. Like those things are like hand painted. And I'm like, where did you where did you get um having like a space, like they call it like a space opera theme, but how they have all these adventures in space? Like how did you think about this going beyond just Earth and everything? That's that's like a real strong <laughs> imagination to have. So um like I said, you ask how do I um, expand my imagination and creativity. So first you need inspiration. So there are many um, directions you can go to um, gather inspiration. You've got music, books, <laughs> other people's artwork, cartoons, movies, different environments. So when you draw like I, how many of you guys like look on DeviantArt sometimes? Or have you ever heard of the app? Those people are the bomb. Like, like some of the some of the greatest artists out there. Sometimes I just think they're like AI or something. Like the AI just be drawing all that stuff, you know. But those are like real people who are real dedicated into the art, and most of it is digital. Which I'm gonna get dabble into um, a little bit later in this presentation. But um, digital drawing is becoming more and more um, popular. This was like tra um, traditional was back in the day, because now we have. Um, more advanced technology, we can. Um, it's easier for us to draw, easier for, for us to get production out. Like if we was to make, if you was working for somebody, they say, "Okay, I need a comic book cover." You would go and just buy all the supplies you need. Well, you would back then, but now you wouldn't go buy all the supplies you need. Okay, I need um, markers. I need a paint. I need some paint brushes. I need like a hundred and fifty color pencils. I need like all these different um, drawing surfaces. But now you got like digital. All you need is a nice big screen, a pad, one stylus or a pen. You use that, it's your pencil, it's your crayon, it's your marker, it's your paintbrush, it's everything. So for inspiration, what you can, um, I like to listen to music. I feel like when I listen to music, that it helps inspire, um, it helps inspire um, you to um, come up with different things. And it kind of, to me, when I'm drawing or when I'm painting, it helps me. Um, it ha it helps guide my hand. Like I can be, I, I can just be thinking about nothing. But how the music like hits my brain. I know it sounds weird, but how it hits my brain. It just it moves my hand for me. I don't really have to think about it. So that's really cool. So I every time I look at something, or I look at um an album cover, or I look at um or I look at carts like posters and everything. I always look at the artwork. I don't care about the story. I don't really care about who's in it. Like when I see movie posters, the first thing from an artist's point of view, I just look at the artwork. I don't care who's famous in it. I don't care if it's it's all it's all fancy and everything. I'm just looking at all the little pieces of like artwork. So um like this. I listen to Owl City a lot. I don't know who you guys know who that is, but I listen to that. He has like real good artwork in all his album covers. I play this game. This is an app game. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of into app games. If you ever look at the background in this game, if you just just try to, if you ever look at the background in that game, it is flawless. It is beautiful. I 
I only wish to draw like that. And as I said, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult. So I like looking at when when I'm doing landscape, because I'm trying to dabble into landscape. I've been doing characters most of my life. But I, I want to try to get out of my comfort zone and do some landscape. So I say, okay, what inspires me to do um, landscapes? Well, I want to just draw the most vivid and most beautiful places I've ever seen that I haven't been to. You know, that's what everybody likes, that fantasy place they've never been to, they never been to you know? So I said, okay, let me look up some, a cove, like a small independent cove with that own little beach and own little ocean. So, and um, autumn is my favorite um, time of year. Everything is orange, red, and yellow. I look at that for inspiration. I'm planning on drawing like the um, four seasons um, pretty soon. Um, probably painting, I'm probably gonna do it traditionally my first try, but um, but yeah, you can find inspiration everywhere. It's very, it's very fun to do this. Go outside, cut the TV off, just go outside, or just, just walk around. You can find inspiration anywhere. Just listen to music while you're walking. So um, let's keep going. So after you've gathered your, inf um, your inspiration, now you need to prepare. Now, when you're doing preparation, you might get excited, like, oh, what will I do first? What do I, what I need to do? Well, first, if you, if you feel like you're going to tackle a certain, um, you feel like you want to tackle a certain, um, I would say a certain picture, let me say, um, say you want to draw, um, a beach. That's all I can think about right now. You want to draw a beach. Okay, so you know, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to go on YouTube. YouTube is a wonderful place for knowledge. You, some people some people disagree, but I think I learned a lot about art and technique of art digitally and traditionally by watching YouTube. And Patreon also, unless you, but you have to pay um, to um, get some of that stuff that they got. But YouTube, you go there, you acquire knowledge, you find out what you need. That's when it comes to tools, supplies. You watch YouTube, you go, um, you find out the tools you need. Okay, I need this, I need that. Or oh, what kind of tablet do I need? Um, do I need an iPad? iPad is a real, oh, whoa. It's a real good um, device when it comes to digital drawing. You got the Apple Pencil and everything. It's expensive, but it's good. You got the Webcom, you got the, um, got that other one. Um, but yeah, so you get all the supplies you need. So after that, you need motivation. You tell yourself that I'm not gonna, I'm going to set out a day. I'm going to not procrastinate. I'm going to um, get your little small space together. I can see right here, just build your own studio inside, um, inside your room. Just move all your clothes you got on the floor, all your junk out the way, clean up, get you a desk, get you a chair, get you a lamp. And you just set, you set the mood for yourself. Open up the window, put the fan in the window, let the cool breeze blow in. And you just sit there and you just think, okay, this is what I'm going to do all day today. I'm going to make this happen. Because nothing doesn't happen unless you motivate yourself. Remember that. There's nothing going to happen. And nothing to about to do it. I say that all the time. All right. So after preparation. After, after preparation, it's time to get started. All right, so you think of an idea. Say you, say, say you, you just thought of an idea. So what you need to remember is the most important thing when you come up with an idea. When you're drawing something, just like how, like I said, Ridley Scott, um, James Cameron, all those people, all these people who made, made all those old 80 cartoon shows like X-Men, I love X-Men, um, the Spider-Man animated series and all that stuff. Every show that you ever thought was good in the 80s and 90s, Transformers and all that stuff, it has to have substance. Without substance, you, you have nothing. It's, it's, just, it's just plain artwork. You have to have story and you have to have, um, like I said, substance. So, and you also need to have originality. Do your own thing. Don't do what everybody, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you examples later on in this presentation. You need originality. Don't do what everybody else do. Don't do not do, okay, I see people drawing like this. Let me do this. Oh, I, I really love this character. Let me let me just copy a little bit from him and put it into my character. Let me copy this guy's whole story. They won't know. You know he, he's, he's not a popular character in, in the comic book world or in the video game. Let me just copy that down. 
you know, so. And then what you need to really do after you have all your ideas, because I found this out. When I was a kid, I used to have a whole bunch of ideas. When I got older, it's like some of my ideas start fading away. Now, I watched a movie called, um, y'all probably, probably know, it was, it was like a little kid movie when I was a young kid called Sharp One Love Girl. So he had dreams. Yeah, he had dreams. Yeah, so it was, yeah, I was a kid then. I, I love that movie. But um, I was a, I was a kid, and I realized that it was this kid that liked to dream a lot, and he kept all his dreams inside of his dream journal, what he called it. So in his dream journal, he wrote notes down and he drew whatever he saw in his head, and that's how every successful person does. You don't think they have like a big stack of mountains of just like notes of just like good storytelling and good artwork just sitting there. Just collecting dust. They can always bring it out. Oh, we need some originality. Oh, we need us a good um, animation. Oh, we need us a good movie. Okay, <coughs> not come. Here you go. All what you need is right here to make it good. Don't alter it. Just go straight from that. This is what you must have. Now I got I, Italian guy. That's how you know you got substance. When you, after you look at it or you read it, you go like, voila. You know. So after you get started with that. You need, oh, too far. <clears throat> That's one of them I'm getting to. You need to know the dangers of drawing. You, when, you, when you first start drawing or when you really getting into it and you thinking like, okay, my stuff is getting out there, my stuff is popular, um, people really like it on Instagram, on digital, um, digital art or Tumblr. I don't know if people put their stuff on, I don't know about all that, but um. These are the three major ones. Now, there'll probably be a lot out there, but there's three major dangers that you need to know when you're drawing. And when, and in the future, when you become like a big shot, if you get there, you know? So you got, don't be lazy. And you have, don't get cocky. And that's when you get later on, later on when you get um, a little bit higher. And then you got, don't give in to the trend. And I'm gonna give you an example. You might not agree with it, but I'm gonna give you every example all three of these. Okay. Now, this one I'm talking about. Don't get lazy. Now, back in the day, Mr. Um, Mr. Yakon, Mr. Yama, I don't want to say it over here. Mr. Yama, he created Dragon Ball Z back in like, I think it's like 1992, 1993. All this is done traditionally. This is done with ink pen and with um with color. All this is done with ink pen. Every detail. Notice that the that he used um he showed every follicle. I use Trunks for example because he's the one who has the most expressive pen. Every follicle. He drew every follicle in there. Everything is straight. Every, you can it, it just represents like every follicle. I, I like really appreciate that. You see um, I can say, I, I know you probably can't see it because it's pretty light up in here, but he uses um, something called hatching. Hatching is used when um, you're doing sketches or when you're inking. You use, get, um, um, <clears throat> you use hatching to um, display shadows or dark areas. So you see that a lot. You see that a lot all throughout this. You see that, um, I'm not trying to get off. <laughs> okay, so. Notice that when you're doing your line work, this is something important that people who want to be artists need to know. Line work is everything. This is done traditionally with the, um, with the ink pen, fountain pen. When you do your strokes and you do your streaks, when they come out, they come out, first they, um, they're fat, but then they come out sharp and finished. Everything is like that with this. Come out, come out bold. You fall out sharp. You come out well. You fall out sharp. It does that with everything. But then when you when you find out what digital is, when you find out what digital is, then that's when you just write these thick, these thick bold lines. Nothing but thick lines. You lose all detail in the hair. The hair is just all like clumped together. It's not real detail. Is that if you're gonna make a show or a cartoon? That's updated. You have to make it at least better than its um, predecessor. You know, 
right here. There's, it's, it's like no detail. It's a good show. I, I still I still watch it. But you you, you got you, come on now. You just you have from an artist view when when I look at it, I always look at like I said the aesthetics of it. Now look this thickness this. Not even not real detail in there, it's just lines. When you look at it, all you see is lines and color. Y'all gotta remember that. It's just, it's just, it upsets me. No, just, that's just like a comparison. I know I don't want to start ranting on that, but that's just comparison. You, you gotta do better. Okay, now this is when you get copied. Now, I used to like like Marvel and everything, but then when I don't know when they merged with Disney and everything, but this is when you cocky. When you find out that kids like you, you, you try to find out, OK, kids not going to notice what good quality animation and good cartoons look like. They just kids. They won't know. They don't know. What, um, they don't know what cartoons look like. They, they don't they never seen X, X-Men from the 90s or Spider-Man or Silverhawks or with um thundercats and nothing like that so this is when you get this is when you get um a little cocky and a little lazy at the same time you think you're so good that okay i got a big name with marvel and i'm a big name with disney that okay i can do anything and get away with it mm -hmm. see this wh what is this you look at this it's nothing but a thick lines and color fill you ever use color fill and um I will use Adobe Illustrator or, or something like that. It just fills in um, the color when you put a layer over it, when you put a layer <laughs> under it. All you got is this line. Lines make up the muscle. You can tell that there's no like real kind of physique to him. It's just like lines and color. And that's how it is with every just thick lines and color. No, no kind of detail at all. No shadows, no lighting. You got to really... Next. This is when I say get given to the trend. Now, I'm almost, I'm almost finished. And when I get into originality, now when you give into the trend, you have to understand that you have to understand what originality means. So they got a new Spider-Man, um, a new Spider-Man um, cartoon coming out, and I noticed right away that they're trying to look sim, that they try to make the show or whatever look similar to what most kids watch today. You know, you watch um what Steven Universe or whatever come on Cartoon Network, Teen Titans Go. Like like I already explained this about lines and color and everything and lack of detail. You look at that back in the day and then you just look at that. This is like two colors and lines. This is like two colors this is is lame. I'm, 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 And this, mm -hmm. the reason why all these shows did so well is because nobody never seen it, nothing like that before. You got this. This, I didn't even know that became like a big hit because I didn't have cable for a long time. So now I watch, I said, why everybody like noodle people? <laughs> <laughs> so now I watch this show. I watch this show. The only reason why these shows are so good because they have substance. You have to remember that they have substance and story over anything. This lasts so long because people found story arcs in every character that just lasts a long time. This this show is just good because it has references to 80, like back in the days, 80s. Like the background just looks like someone just paint like paint like watercolors just in the background. But it's a real good show. That people like it because I, it's like because it's real atmospheric. I would say. When you look at it, everything is all faded. All the colors are like faded and everything. It just look like a like a magical dream sequence or something. This show, <laughs> I don't know why they last that long. <laughs> yeah, but like I just see it as it's just they they are a parody of them of of themselves. They do everything, but the only I watch the show. I survived through one show, one one episode, and I laugh my butt off because I like how they use they poke fun at the references of DCEU, um, a lot DCEU, the old Justice League, the old Justice League Unlimited, 
They like to poke fun at all of that. What's the poke fun of the Suicide Squad movie? You know they're doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was like, hey, and they, they've been on for a long time. Longer than, no, they ain't longer than that, but they've been on for a long time. Like I said, you have the house, you have to have substance. No, all these are still, pe all these the people who created this was original. Well, it's the teens, I think. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but all of these people had originality. And that's what you need. Originality and substance. All right. And when you try to copy of these people, this is what you get. This show came out like 2005, 2006. What's new Scooby-Doo? And then you come out with this and try to look like the other stuff. Try to make it look wacky and silly because that's what kids like these days. They like when cartoons or people just be butt shaking and everything. From look, little kids don't want, I don't know what little kids like these days. That's that kind of stuff they, they want to see. Okay, bro. That's the old Ben 10 that came out when I was a kid. 2005, I was in the fifth grade. And then they just downgrade to that. I, I, I don't I don't know what like laziness or they just trying to give into what kids like kids like everything to look adorable or, or something. I don't know. So enough of ranting about all of that. But okay, back for the <laughs> Okay, drawing concepts. So we're now going to get into actual. Um, actual drawings um, and what you can do to um to start off okay so what you can do is and you can do this um when you get home just just practice start off with a character you have a character you like say um say um like one of you 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 thought about making a character say she's from um she's like from the heart of africa and she she like ride and she like talks she can talk the lions and all that kind of stuff you know, you can do something like that, or, or she can talk to elephants or everything. So what you would do is you draw a character, you give he or she a name, do that. Just get 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 a notepad. It can be it can be line paper, it can be um college rule, wide world paper. Get sit down, just to doodle. You don't even have to draw good. Just just put it down on paper. Draw it draw it out. Give it a name. Write little notes about her um her character um her personality and everything. Give it a backstory. Give her a backstory. And when you give her a backstory, I guarantee you that more stuff, you can just start imagining and you can just start building and building off that. You can build a whole world off just one one or two characters, you know? So after that, that I said like, mm -hmm. the repetition also helped with it. Yes, that's that's what I'm getting to. Um, that's, that's a good question. Thank you. So we I, have- I've looked at some Capcom's work mm -hmm. that they did for Street Fighter 2 and uh, I saw a lot of characters that were drawn over and over again. I saw Chun Li, Ryu, Ken, Kami, and Sakura. And those are the five characters that I pinpointed that were most commonly drawn in about two hundred pages of artwork. Yeah. So what you do is when you when you first start drawing, you're gonna go. You're gonna have to go through so many countless and countless variations of characters, transformation of characters. And that's excuse me. That's what came to um to this. I looked up, I said some early sketches from um Mr. Yama. I never I never saw this before. This was um the early um the early um concept for um Go for Goku, you know? I didn't know he was gonna be like a, a little monkey baby kid thing. And this was one of his earlier comics that was called Dragon Boy. And I said, Really? Dragon Boy? You said, Okay, that's Goku and that's um oh, Chi Chi. So I'm like, cool. I, I I didn't know that. So over so many years, he just kept drawing over and over again, kept building. So like I said, building a world behind it, and say, okay, well maybe I want to try to um dabble into this some more. Let me change it up. And then you just until he like got the Dragon Ball Z. So just like with Pixar, Pixar is amazing with with how they um with how they do their three D design, three D three D work, and everything. So these are like different concepts of Mr. Incredible. I really like this. How um how um how they came up. Like I don't like you can tell that everybody had their own kind of um way they wanted to draw him. And that's good because those what they call it, imagineers at um Disney Studio Pixar Studios, whatever, they um 
other than no, they just have like a whole bunch of people just itching to put their own um their own design on display. And you can see it right here. And I'm I'm kinda um glad of what the final um for the final product was with that. And then you see like different drawings for this. This was the Incredibles. Um, this was the baby. And I, I would say, wow, don't look, don't don't make them look like that. But yeah, but um, yeah, these are like some early drawings. You can you can tell they didn't even get the um, like I can tell like they was going for this, because if you look at the incredible slice, it kind of looked like it's set in the '60s. It's kind of like this this modern modern retro '60s thing going on. And Crash Bandicoot just came out. I can't afford it yet because I'm a college student and stuff. But um. I looked at some early sketches and everything, but um, I just looked at him and said, like, now he went through so many different changes until he got to what you see today. And he, looked, he just looked kind of rough. He, he just looked like, this is one of him who just looked like he was on some, <clears throat> on, on some super stuff. But um, yeah, but they came, when they got out with the final, um, I, with the final concept, I was, I was glad with it, but then when you know other people started, like I forget who made. Um, I think Naughty Dog. I don't know. They, hmm? I mean, they they made that, but somebody else um got a hold of it when um. Hmm? Naughty Dog made. Yeah, Naughty Dog. So when um, like the last two came out, um, what was it? Um, Crash of the Titans and Mutant. Somebody else made it, and they just redraft him all over again. But this is the Star Wars stuff I'm talking for the um for the older people. Um the Star Wars concept, all that stuff is hand painted. And the paintings, I'm I'm pretty sure they're so expensive, it's ridiculous. But all this stuff right here, and this was like a um this was a concept for like um poster art for like um advertisement and everything. And I know you remember this this scene. I really like that scene. And this was like the, the earlier concepts for all C3PO and all RTD2. And I thought that was pretty cool. And I like I, I just love retro like <coughs> concept art. It is, it's really amazing. So um I have some I have some demos that I that I've done where I'll show you the process. The different process of how you start off with um, a simple, a simple circle, simple circle, simple skeleton. I like to call it a skeleton, and come up with something finished, kind of like this. But um, I'm gonna let Javon take my friend Javon take the floor and talk about traditional art if you guys would like that. Right? Yes. All right. So, How y'all doing today? Yeah. Um, uh, let me ask, let me ask you something. I raise your hand if y'all um, ever done a self portrait. And uh, what materials y'all use? Y'all use um, 
graphite color pencils. Big pens. Big pens. Nice, nice. Um, let me use myself. Okay, my name is uh, Javon Davis. I'm a, a, a junior in uh, Columbus State University, and I'm just here want to uh, show you um, about uh, how I do a uh, self portrait. But I have to warn you, it's not um, it's not completely finished. You should, I have to finish uh, the face part and uh, some of my dreads. I can explain you about the uh, how I use the tricks, uh, color tricks and stuff. What, what are the topics? Uh, cr creating uh, grid lines on both uh, the, uh, the, the, the photo and the, uh, the drawn paper. Uh, sketching your self-portrait. Uh, the purpose of checking your self-portrait before you begin to do your final drawing. Uh, building and blending layers for both the, uh, the light and dark values and detail tricks. Um, this right here, I had to uh, give you like a, um, a good uh, example about um, creating grid lines. Like, um, let's see what happened. Um, so that right there is a um, a photo that you want to do, and this one is actually a drawing paper. Okay, um, what I'm trying to explain is uh, how to do like a grid uh, li lines is um, I have to give you a better example. For some reason I like to do something because it helps me um, to understand how to do it. Okay, you gotta. Um, This is uh, a photo that you want to do your self-portrait, and this is your uh, drawing paper. Um, to do uh, the grid lines, what I learned myself is you gotta find the halves for both the um, horizontally and vertically. Like for example, this uh, this is eight inches for the width and. Uh, um, 11, yeah, 11, um, length. and um, this is a trick. You gotta find um, what's what's in what's in the middle. Like, what is uh? Are y'all good at math? <laughs> yeah, this is something something it's something gotta do with because of math. Uh, it's, like, it's like you gotta like. Know your measurements, and um, you gotta find where which part is the center. Like for example, this is um eight and a half uh, inch, and you want to find what is uh, between eight eight and a half inch. And that is like um four four uh four by four. So I should probably rule it too. So you like good example. Yeah, you have to find like the um the middle. You have to find yeah, you have to find the middle to do your um to do the length. And the same thing, same thing for the um the, the horizontal. You have, you have to find um you have to find like um what is it what's um What's in, what's in the center of the inch? Like this is eleven inch, and um, the half of that that is five and a half. So yeah, so that's that's how you begin. And um, this is another step is um, you got to uh, find the other halves for the multiples. And that's kind of, that's kind of like a little, gets a little tricky. Um, you gotta find what is the middle for the the width and the length. So you create your uh, square. Same thing for the other sides. Yeah. 
And that was dumpy, dumpy, dumpy stuff probably ended up. And it probably came out a little rectangular. And um, the reason why I show you this strategy because it's like, for me, it's kind of easy because you want, if you want, if you want to do like a normal size paper, that's fine. You can also work for a uh, larger paper and or or smaller. Same thing for this one. You got to find a half for this one. This is like uh, I'll say about um, I'll make it easy. Or Twenty inches, and this is um, I'll say ten or ten inches. Uh, they have the ten inches is five inches. And they have a 20 inches, 10 inches. So you gotta find the middle part. And the same thing for the other the multiple um, squares. That's that's why I learned. That's, that's why I learned when you um, to begin um, to do the grid lines. And then that's that's what I did. But, but that, I did that on a computer because uh, the reason why I did that because I'm trying to give y'all like a better understanding how how I did it. But it's not it's not sloppy. <laughs> yeah, same thing for the drawing paper. Oh yeah, hey, oh, yeah. Please draw lightly. Use a two H pencil because um, I'm telling you because if you use like a um a regular pencil or um. Or darker pencil, it can be hard to erase trying to get rid of the marks. I'm telling you. I'm gonna start right over. Um, yeah, sketch, sketch your portrait. Uh, what I learned is you got like a uh, jaw, um, start drawing the head. Um, it's like you can also look at your photo like back and forth because um, it helps me. That's me uh, where, where the lines I can see. Yeah, then you got and you um, start start on, on the eyes and the nose, the mouth, the ears, and hair. And um, you can also um, uh, finish drawing the uh, shoulders too. Okay, like after you're done doing your sketch, right? This for me, this this is this is important. The purpose of checking your drawings before maybe the purpose is check your drawing before you begin to do your final drawing, like do your graphite or do your uh, color pencils or painting. It's like um, first one is to make sure that your head is not looking disproportionate. Because I mean, like <sighs> I mean, like you you you, you it, You'll be shocked though how disproportionate how face looks. <laughs> um, make sure that the eye is not bigger than the other. I've seen this in many. Um, it happens before. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like I see this happen to uh, most people, including myself. To be fair, it's like um, the best way you can um, make sure you double check uh, the eyes. It's not uh, bigger than the other. Yeah, so what I learned is that I want to draw like um like a line to keep it to keep it level. And um and also, um, the the, the, uh, the width too, see like how long uh, his eyes were, and so if if it takes you like an hour or two hours to double check it, then, hey, it's, it's worth it because everybody wants their picture look accurate. Oh yeah, and um, yeah, double check all your areas just in case of um, if, it, if, if it looks if it looks off place. Um, as you begin, make sure you want to erase the pencil drawings and the gray line areas where you want to begin. But that's for that's for the color pencils, okay? Because if you do, uh, we want to draw with the color pencils, then um, that's where you start seeing the pencil marks. And yeah, for graphite, that's that's kind of okay. If you want to do the um, like um, 
trying to do like a highlight areas and yeah, you can uh, erase the darker areas. Okay, um, building layers for your uh, darker areas. Um, <clears throat> you can like uh, gradually start off with the light color first. Um, I'll just go ahead and pretend that I'm going to uh, do the shading. And I'll say uh, this is uh, the light, light color pencil. Um, I'm going to uh, gradually shade. I don't do this. <laughs> and all uh, like that are hard because uh, if you're trying to color over it, then you'll see some marks on the on color pencil. You just gradually want to work on your tone, tone of the color. And then you want to do a layer so you get like a darker color. You want to like gradually shade, shade to it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's important though, like you want to uh, build layers because it gives you that rich, richest color. And yeah, uh, yeah, please use a, a lighter color, please use a, a lighter color pencil to blend the, uh, the darker colors first or to focus on the tone. Because um, that's, uh, sometimes though, like I've seen people who start off with a darker color pencil, uh, sometimes they can't get that tone where they, how they, uh, when it comes to coloring. Okay, blending colors for the uh, light areas. Uh, use a uh, lot of colors first and then blend with the white colors pencils. White color pencils is your friend. It's, um, y'all can, can disagree with me. It's just, I like using white color pencils because it really helps me out to work on a tone of Doing a lot of colors, like um, especially blended. I mean, like it, it just it really helps me out. It's it's way better than using blending blending pencil. Like let's say you got a light color, and then uh, I'll say this, I'll say this is white. And uh, what you do is you just kind of uh, gradually like doing like small little circles. Where you get the on uh, the wax get uh, mixed in, and thing thing is you can um, you, if, if you feel like it's too light, you can also use uh, the same color to try to color over it. Because if you color over the white, it makes it uh, a little a little darker if you want to. And by the way, about the color pencils, I use uh, Prisma color pencils, if I want to let y'all know, because I mean, they're, they're, they're the best. They give you like a high quality of, give you high quality. Okay, uh, de the detail tricks. Uh, the most important tip is keep your color pencil sharp. In order to do uh, details for the pores, air follicles, etc. Just in case, hey, if y'all really, I'm telling you, y'all really good to do um, portraits like, like, like famous art on um, social media, like Heather Rooney, uh, which is a social media YouTuber, um, people who like, um, like famous people, like Michael Angelo. Like you would like actually want to make your picture come out like HD. Okay, um, the pores. Uh, to do the pores, um, that's like for the uh, for light areas. What I mean by light areas, I'm talking about like uh, the areas where you can see like the, uh, the, the highlights while this side is, is shadow. Um, I did use Oh yeah, and um, same thing that I told you before. Like after you use the uh, the colors to try to build build the layers, you uh, you blend the colors with the uh, with a white pencil to work on the tone of, of, of the uh, I mean to blend in the colors to make it light to make it lighter. Um, then start off with the uh, 
So I'll put the pencil by just doing dots, like, like for example. Uh, let's say, okay, doing the, doing the skin. Start with the uh, right color. And then, um, then you blend it in with, with the white. Then uh, you just uh, get the same color. You just doing just dots, like like small soft dots. Of course, I can't see it though. <laughs> it, may, it may be slow though, take you a while, but it, but it but it does work. It. Oh yeah, if uh, if you see your pores that it, it's, that is uh, white, use it like a white gel pen. Because for back to this, if you try to um, do it with a white color pencil, it, all it does is just blend in. So use like a white gel pen or acrylic paint and just do it in small dots instead. Of it. Okay, uh, yeah. um, for the uh, hair, um, of course, on the can I had dreaded. <laughs> um, yeah, just say that um, you got to Sarah, let's just try to play this video. Okay, I guess not. Yeah, because I have a video that's playing where I show you like how to how, like, how to uh, do the uh, uh, change the color and do the white highlights. Okay, like Say, um, first got a, um, uh, has a black hair. And of course you want to, um, start just, just doing color. And then, uh, get this, um, uh, white, white pencil. But uh, have you have you color the hair, but don't color like like let's say like fifty percent uh, color, but you still you still see the white tooth. If y'all know what I'm talking about, white tooth is like a, a poster where you can see like a bunch of uh, small lines. Just because if y'all know, and then okay, after you, after you, uh, you color, and then you get the white, you just do that. For some reason though, like I can still see like a little white that's on on a uh, person uh, person black hair. Also, memory keep, keep a white uh, pencil. Uh, I mean, white pencil sharp, so you can do the hair follicles. And then you can also do you also uh, can repeat when you're trying to fill it in like the layers. Also, back and forth. Okay, and um, the, uh, my final uh, trick is uh, about the hair on the face. Okay, like for some reason though, like when I do like a, um, a chin hair or a mustache, like after you did your, uh, your colors of the skin, you can um, just sharp up your uh, your black your black pencil and you just do just do the uh, dibble, like just dibble because. Um, I mean, like once I've done that, man, it's like it, it really kind of helps. Kind of really helps you out when you're, you're trying to um, do uh, the, the hair follicles. And for the uh, eyebrows, first you had uh, we got to color the color, uh, the skin, but not all the way. But you still leave out some uh, some white cup, leave out the white a little bit. And then you all, then you just uh, draw the uh, eyebrows. In a, in, a, in a way, how your eyebrow looks, how your hair, how your hair goes, like a yeah, like a soft hashing.
I'll show you another example. Right up in the old days, top of those. Yeah, this is my, uh, it's supposed to be an eyebrow, but I'm right now doing it, I'm working on a skin. And you still see like a little uh, white highlights. And then you just do that to, um, to the eyebrows. I'm tired of walking over. I just I don't tell him what to jump. I'm sorry. <laughs> And for my uh, final tips is um, keep your uh, color pencil sh uh, sharp in it, especially when you do the details, like I explained uh, especially before. Uh, use your uh, backup materials, uh, such as a white gel pen, where you want to do your, uh, uh, your your pores, or you want to do, you can also use it for your hair follicles too. Um, craftsmanship. Raise your hand, y'all take good care of your craftsmanship. We gotta keep our paper superb, clean. You know? <laughs> hey, hey, look. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm struggling as well though because like every time I try to uh, erase, sometimes I get these marks on the paper and it, and it starts messing up and hard for me to erase. Sometimes you got these um, pencil, um, colored pencil, sharpened wood, whatever that's on it. And then on something, um, it just stuck on your paper. Okay, as you are coloring, this 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 one, this one I forgot to put it. As you are coloring, um, we start to see this wax start to build up. Get like a uh, a paintbrush, it, 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 a paintbrush that's dry. You just wipe wipe it out instead of using your hands. Cause use your hands, it, it'll start to smear. And oh boy, I know y'all want that. And um, Practice makes perfect. Uh, for me, I don't have a comfort zone when it comes to uh, drawing. Like, I don't do just self portraits. I also do like other stuff with drama, though. I, I mean, like perspective, you know, landscape, sometimes concept art. Yeah, I, I don't have a comfort zone, but those of y'all who like to do uh, self portrait, um, yeah, then practice makes perfect. Okay. If y'all want to look at my self portrait, y'all can go ahead and uh, pass around. I have this so far. And if you guys got questions, um, we're open for QA. Yeah. So, how do you adjust your technique to when it comes to, to Trist artificial art? Sorry. How do you adjust it to the texture of the paper? Because I know it's like smooth, same technique doesn't always work for creating a certain. Yeah. As opposed uh, to something that has bumps in it or okay. just some kind of gradient. Yeah. So, no, no, um, you said <coughs> traditional versus. Oh, that's a question oh. for him. As oh. for the paper and how it changed your, te your technique as you approach it. Okay, so since you're a traditional artist, mm -hmm. you've probably experienced all sorts of paper, like yes. smooth or rough. How do you adjust those like tiny <laughs> smooths that sort of affects the uh, style overall? Like you have to work differently with the changes of paper. Oh, oh sorry, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but paper that are smooth. Um, this 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 is what I'm like, what, what, what's it, uh, the the bit that's smooth? Sometimes it's kind of hard when you're trying to try to build in the layers and stuff, but you, they see um, the color that you've done before that that's um, that that appears. But 
decibel damper. Uh, yeah, but uh, Bristol is the best. Bristol paper is the best. Um, because um, you can see like uh, the thickness and you got the, uh, the tool, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, because um, once you got uh, the tool, you can also like. Uh, you can also like blend in like multiple colors, and then they give you like uh, like a smooth texture kind of one. And it has a more you know like you find out that doesn't um, work for you, just you know, keep trying. Because I mean everybody's different. I mean everybody learns different different materials.